fake IDs, underage drinking, weed on planes, dog fighting. All done by one team. And no, this wasn't a college team. This was a professional NBA team. This wasn't Showtime, Bad Boys, Lob City, or the Heatles. But they did have an iconic nickname. Enter the Portland Jailblazers. A team that had one player rack up 41 techs in one season. A team that had teammates swinging for knockouts in practice. But it gets way more ridiculous if you look at the off-court shenanigans. The longest stretch where a player wasn't arrested, suspended, or the police weren't called to their home was 17 days. One jailblazer took his love for Kush to an entirely different level though. He tried sneaking an ounce of it onto a plane, wrapped in tinfoil. But together, Steve Kerr, yes, eight-time champion Steve Kerr, called his time with this dysfunctional group the most fun of his career. I'm Frank Smith, and this is the story of the most bizarre team in NBA history, a Clutch Points original mini documentary. Between 1999 and 2006, the Blazers had an interesting group of guys. From Rasheed Wallace to Damon Stoudemire to Ruben Patterson to Zach Zebo Randolph, this team was loaded with talent and characters. These guys could not stay out of trouble to save their lives, on or off the court. The first domino to fall was former All-Star Sean Kemp. Kemp was traded to the Blazers in 2000, but he struggled with drug addiction for years. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to finish his first season in Portland and had to lead the team after 74 games to check into rehab. But this team wasn't filled with just misguided vets. The adventures of Damon and Rashid was a Portland saga no one wanted to see. After a game in Seattle in 2002, the duo was driving back to Portland in Stoudemire's neon yellow Hummer. Inconspicuous enough, right? Suddenly, they saw flashing lights behind them. Stoudemire and Wallace were initially pulled over for speeding, but the ticket was the least of their problems. The officer got a strong smell of marijuana coming from the vehicle, so he initiated an investigation. The two were busted with weed in the car and charged with misdemeanor possession. But this wasn't unusual for Stoudemire. Earlier that year, police had found a pound of weed in his home after a false burglary alarm was triggered. And in perhaps one of the most boneheaded moves in NBA history, Damon was seized trying to sneak an ounce and a half of weed through an airport metal detector in 2003. He had wrapped it in tinfoil. Now, it might not be as dumb as Rudy Gobert's move, but come on, man. That brings us to perhaps the most disturbing member of the crew, Ruben Patterson. Patterson had the ugliest introduction to Portland you could imagine. In 2001, just a few months before he signed a six-year, $33.8 million contract with the Blazers, Patterson entered a modified guilty plea to attempted rape after forcing the nanny of his children to perform sexual acts on him. He was forced to state, I'm not no bad guy, I'm not no rapist, I'm a great guy, during his introductory press conference. The great guy plea didn't convince the judge. He was sentenced to 15 days in jail and had to register as a sex offender in Oregon. However, he was only suspended for the first five games of the season. Now to put this into perspective, J.R. Smith was suspended one game for throwing soup at an assistant coach. Soup. And to put that into perspective, Darius Miles was suspended 10 games for violating the league's drug policy in 2006. Makes you raise an eyebrow. Astonishingly, three days after Wallace and Stoudemire were pulled over for their stunt in the Hummer, Patterson was arrested for domestic abuse. However, he was never charged after his wife asked prosecutors to drop the case. But Patterson's rap sheet didn't start in Portland. The year after he joined the Blazers, Patterson was charged with misdemeanor assault in 2000 after beating up a man outside of a Cleveland nightclub. What had the man done to deserve the beating? Allegedly, he scratched Patterson's car. Ouch. But all these incidents occurred away from the basketball court. On December 20th, 2002, the Jail Blazers brought the fight to the hardwood. Rasheed Wallace drained a game-winning fadeaway to beat the Warriors, and the team should have gone home happy. But Blazer Bonzi Wells got tangled up with Warriors big man Chris Mills underneath as the shot went through. The two started pushing one another, and Golden State's Troy Murphy suddenly came in swinging. As coaches and staff were breaking up the fight, fans began throwing items at the Blazers players. Rasheed Wallace climbed into the stands and tried to grab a fan that threw gum at him, which cost him a hefty fine from the league. Chris Mills rushed the Blazers' locker room but was restrained, so he instead decided to park his car in front of the Portland team bus in retaliation. Mills, accompanied by a few friends, refused to move his car and called out basically every Blazer in shouting distance to fight. Eventually, the Oakland police had to get involved and ironically escorted the Portland bus out of the lot. For all this, Mills received a three-game suspension, Wells two games, and Wallace the aforementioned fine. A few months later, rookie Quintel Woods got in on the jailblazer action. He was flagged for speeding, but when asked for his license and registration, Woods instead gave the officer his basketball trading card and two credit cards as ID. To make matters worse, Woods was also in possession of, of course, 
Weed. Woods came out with quite the stat line, driving while uninsured, operating a motor vehicle without a driver's license, tinted windows, and marijuana possession. In 2004, things took a serious turn as Woods pled guilty to animal abuse after he was allegedly involved in a dogfighting operation. He was sentenced to 12 months probation and 80 hours of community service. That leaves us with maybe the most unforgettable jailblazer, Zebo. He once told police, I'm a gangster, not a blazer. And at the time, Randolph was out to prove it. Zebo was not a fan of the way Ruben Patterson had been treating the team's younger players. So when Patterson got into a heated confrontation with Woods, Randolph stepped in and sucker punched Patterson in the face. The blow was so severe that it reportedly broke the 27 year old's eye socket. Randolph, fully aware of Patterson's reputation, went into hiding at a teammate's house. After the two were forced to reconcile after Randolph's two-game suspension, Patterson and Randolph had an underlying tension for the rest of their careers. This team was just as mouthy to the refs as they were to literally everyone else. Rasheed Wallace set an NBA record that will undoubtedly never be broken, racking up a staggering 41 technical fouls during the 2000-2001 season. For comparison, Russell Westbrook and Draymond Green led the league in 2019-2020 with 14. In 2003, Sheed was suspended for a then record seven games after he confronted and threatened infamous referee Tim Donahue outside the Blazers arena following a Portland win. Considering Donahue's rep, she might have had a point here. You didn't even need to be in the NBA to get a piece of the jail Blazers. In 2001, a team flight attendant saw Isaiah Ryder berating a coworker right in front of coaches and staff to the point the woman was shaking and crying. This is the same guy who once told a reporter while playing in Minnesota, I know people who can take you out, and just a few years later, threatened to kill his own teammate to Kembe Mutombo. Ryder also made headlines in 1997 for spitting in the face of an airline employee after he missed a team flight and the airline refused to book his own personal flight. In all, Ryder was fined or suspended 10 times during his three seasons in Portland. Ironically, the person that best summed up the Jailblazers era was Steve Kerr. The now Warriors head coach was an official member of the Jailblazer squad during the 01-02 season in between his championship stop in San Antonio. When asked what that one season in Portland was like, Kerr stated, What a great experience that was. That was awesome. That might have been the most fun year I ever had in the NBA. Just to see the dysfunction, I had never seen it anywhere else. Kerr played with the 72-10 Bulls and still had more fun with the Jailblazers. Dysfunction, recklessness, and excess. If that doesn't sum up the Jailblazers in a nutshell, I don't know what does. Given that the NBA now fines and suspends players that say anything that could even remotely reflect poorly upon the league, it's safe to say the league will never see another team like the one Portland put together. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Frank Smith. Follow Clutch Points at Clutch Points. If you enjoyed it, you can find many more on our Facebook, YouTube, and IGTV. Thanks. Until next time.